Connection. This is my final project for, um, what was it called? Social Connections, um, their relationships, and inspired with Nathan the Wall. It was pretty great. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It was really interesting to learn about all the, all the different interactions people have with each other and why those happen and just, you know, all that kind of stuff. I learned a lot. Uh, some of the things I did learn, one of, one of the things I did learn from reading Carnegie's book, How to um, Win Friends and Influence People. Um, he always said, you know, when interacting with others, when meeting new people or when interacting with your friends, you're supposed to ask them questions about themselves and let them talk about themselves. And so I've always done that. Ever since I can remember, I've always been interest, more interested in what the other person has to say about themselves more than what I have to say about myself, mostly because I'm pretty average and pretty boring person. So, um, yeah, I've, I figured out that I've been doing that right all my life. So that's pretty good. That was good to learn. It made me, I guess, happy about myself. I normally, when I meet a new person, that's how I deal with it. I let them, I ask them a ton of questions about themselves, sort of like I'm interrogating them, really, about their lives. Uh, but I ask them questions about themselves and let them talk mostly. So uh, it's pretty cool that I've learned that I've been doing that right all my life. While it's a good thing that I've been doing that right all my life, I've learned that I've done some things wrong also. One thing is that I let myself get too excited about stuff too easily. Too, I mean, well, excited is usually a good word, but here it's, it's meaning. Um, in a bad way. So, uh, this is not a good thing, obviously. Um, and I've been trying to fix it. Like, ever since that day in class when we talked about this sort of thing, I realized, you know, oh, I've, I've been doing this. I need to stop this. And I've been working on it and really trying to not do it so much anymore. So, it was, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's going pretty well. I feel, I feel like I've gotten better at it. So, that's another thing that I learned. Another thing I learned in this course is that you always have to think about what other people want, not just what you want. Like to get people to do something, you have to make sure that you're doing something to, to the extent of what they want. Um, you know, people aren't going to do something if, if you're just, you know, oh, this is what I want you to do, so you have to do it. You have to make them want to do it. You have to make them, you know, do things that they want to do. You have to make sure that they are on board also. Um, this, this can be difficult, I'm sure. Um, <clears throat> like he said with the calf, um, his one of one of the little stories in Gottman's book was um, a son and a father were move, trying to move a calf, and they were just pushing and pulling, and the calf wasn't going anywhere. But then the mom stuck her fingers in the calf's mouth, and the calf just wanted the, to nurse. So I mean, he you know sucked on her fingers, and he got they got him to move. So he, the calf got what he wanted, and they got what they wanted. So it's a kind of like a mutual relationship, though. So that's pretty good. One thing I found interesting about the material we read is that divorces aren't usually caused by affairs, it's usually the other way around. Uh, when a couple thinks about getting divorced, they feel unloved, and so they go looking for love somewhere else, and usually that's into the arms of another person. And whether, you know, the love they're searching for is just, you know, sex, or whether it's just actual love, they find it in another person, and that's what makes them get divorced. It's not because, because they went to go have an affair, you know, and that's what got them divorced. It's the other way around, usually. The thing I disliked about the material the most is when we were reading Gottman, and it talked about, it was basically every time I read something, it was that marriages are, I, I, I inferred that just marriages are doomed to failure. They, I mean, you're always going to have problems with your marriage, you're always, I mean, no, but you're not just going to be perfectly happy all the time. That's, that's just the way life is, and I've never really thought about it before, I guess. Uh, I just kind of always figured, you know, happily ever after the end, but uh, that's not what happens, I guess. And it's really hard to have a happy marriage nowadays, especially with the, all the distractions people have now and all the, you know, different things people have to do, you know. Um, couples work a lot more now, and so it's really hard. They have lots more stress on their relationship, so I thought that was really sad. I really disliked that because it made me really, you know, nervous to get married, I guess. Well, not nervous, but like, you know, sad about how marriage 
which isn't just like happily ever after like they say in the storybooks. The idea I had for a study to do in the ANSY program, the whole time we were reading Gottman I thought about this. I thought, you know, why not bring in somebody, maybe, I mean, maybe even a student, just train them in the, the way Gottman um, you know, fixes arguments between people and have people, you know, who are going through arguments, whether it's a couple, uh, a romantic couple, or just a couple of friends, and have them sit down with the student who is, um, you know, trained in the Gottman ways, and uh, just have them try and kind of go through their problem and try to fix it. Um, I looked through the reading and some of the um, exercises I would use were the, from principle from principle one and principle seven. It was all pretty serious, like it was all like more based on marriage and all that kind of stuff. So I thought we shouldn't use any of those. But um, like principle five, for instance, the harsh startup questionnaire, the repair attempts questionnaire, and the flooding questionnaire. I thought all these things would make make the both members of the well, I mean, the people you're um, counseling make them more aware of what they do um, to hurt the relationship and what their partner does to hurt the relationship and how that affects the whole the whole thing. Um, from principle two, the fondness and admiration questionnaire. You'd have to change it a bit because it is some sort of about romantic things, but um, like that would make them make each member of the group more more open to what makes them happy about the person that they're with that more makes them actually like their friend or like they're the person they're in a relationship with. So I thought all these kind of things kind of made them aware of how, why they got into you know each other in the first place. The sign-up sheet for these little counseling sessions would look like this. Both the members of the uh, group or the friends would sign up and um, we would match them with the person who would be able to go talk to them for a while and they'd probably just go to the study room um, reserve a spot in the study room for a while and talk through their problems.